ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm David Marsland and this is The Leader Weekends. Every Saturday we bring you a bonus episode of our business podcast, How to Be a CEO. This is a cut-down version, so hit the link in the show notes to hear the full thing or search your podcast provider for How to Be a CEO. There are new episodes every Monday morning. The British countryside, rolling fields, animals grazing, an idyllic, peaceful place that's also a hotbed of risk-taking. Research will tell you what people were thinking yesterday. Research will tell you what people are thinking today. But research cannot tell you what people are thinking tomorrow. You need to have enough courage with your idea to go for it, but to have the belief that people will eventually follow. Wilfred Emmanuel Jones is the founder of the Black Farmer Food Range, an immigrant from a poverty-stricken family who came to the UK as a young boy and worked his way up to own a piece of England, with a few detours along the way. I left school at 16 without any qualifications. I could hardly read and write. I joined the army. In those days, if you were a black guy with attitude, you were either going to get moulded and you'd do as you're told, or you were going to get your head kicked in and you get kicked out of the army. So I got kicked out of the army. I'm David Marsden from the Evening Standard. Wilfred will be appearing at our SME Expo at London's Excel on April 25th and 26th, along with people like Deborah Meaden, Levi Roots and Charlie Mullins. Go to smexpo.co.uk for free tickets. He'll be talking about risk-taking. And when we speak to him at his farm in Devon, it seems like a pretty good place to start. Yes, well, very, thank you very much for having me on your podcast. I really do love talking about taking risks. In fact, I've written a book and it's called Jeopardy! the danger of playing it safe. I think that a lot of people assume that playing it safe is the the, the right thing to do. But you do not have much of a life if you think that the whole thing you've got to do is just to play it safe. Because you never could really measure your, your ability until you push yourself to the boundaries of where you do make mistakes because it's only by making mistakes that you actually learn. So if you look at your life and you celebrate the fact you haven't made a mistake in the last four or five years, that is a testament that you're slumming it in life. You're not living life, you're slumming it. The only way to know you are living life to the max is by the number of mistakes that you make. And therefore, every month you should sort of review your month and say, what mistakes did I make? What have I learned from that? Because that is telling me that I'm living and I'm continuously moving and pushing forward. So risks are essential just for living. Wilfred, what was your biggest mistake? I made tons of mistakes. I mean, trying to find out, you know, tell you which was the biggest mistake. It's a bit like sort of being prejudiced to one of my children. You know, the mistakes <laughs> that are the things that I celebrate and I and I hold very dearly. A lot of that starts with the brand name itself, doesn't it, Wilfred? Now, yours is the Black Farmer. That could have been a mistake, couldn't it? Well, the the reason I chose the Black Farmer as a brand name, well, let me tell you the story about how it came about. Um, When I bought my farm down in Devon, all of my next door neighbors used to refer to me as the Black Farmer. And when I was thinking about launching this brand, I was scratching my head thinking, what is it I could call this brand and make sure that it stands out. And I said, you know what? I'm going to call it the Black Farmer because all my neighbors were calling me that. There was no one else out there that could nick the idea because there's no Black Farmers. And I knew it had an edge to it. I knew that in this world of political correctness and people are not too sure about what the right thing you can say and you can't say, it was going to attract some degree of attention and attention could be good or bad. But, and this is the important part of what I'm about to say, even I thought, well, Wilfred, I know that I'm somebody that likes to take risk, but I think what I should do is that I should research it first. So Mm -hmm. I went, got all the classic research done um, on the, the Black Farmer name about what people would think about the Black Farmer name. And all the research came back and says, do not call it the Black Farmer because people might be upset, they'll be offended, they'll see that it's derogatory, all that sort of stuff. And the lesson is this, and it's a lesson for everybody who lives their lives on research. Research will tell you what people were thinking yesterday. Research will tell you what people are thinking today. 
But research cannot tell you what people are thinking tomorrow. What you need to do is that you need to have enough courage with your idea to go for it, not ex and not expecting everybody to go with you, but to have the belief that people will eventually follow. And that's what you've got to do. It's what that saying, build it anyhow and they'll come. It's the same <laughs> philosophy. And so, and it is about any anybody running a business or you, you if you leave PAYE to start your own business, you're taking a leap of faith. You're being courageous. And just to remember that when you are doing that, you're not going to have support. There's more people who will be finding reasons why you shouldn't be doing it. There'll be more people who are frightened for you. But if you're courageous, you've got to be prepared to go into the, the wilderness where there are no anchors, where there's no people who have done it before. And the only thing you could go with is your gut and your instinct and your courage to keep going forward. It may appear um, to be risky, but the only person that's going to be able to carry it through is your own will. And that will just changes people's perspective because the black farmer brand is nearly coming up to his 20th year. And when I tell that story about how people felt 20 years ago, could you imagine where I'd be now if I decided, oh, I don't know, I'd call myself the Afro-Caribbean farmer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't punch to it as, as a sort of black farmer does. OK, off to the ads. While they're on, if you're interested in the Evening Standards SME Expo, also have a look at the water cooler event. It's at the same place, XL London, same time, April 25th and 26th, and we'll have speakers from organisations like Deutsche Bank, Jaguar and Fujitsu talking about workplace culture, well-being, and mental health. It's also free. Check out watercoolerevent.com. There was a detour, though. You, you you went into television initially, and then you launched your own marketing company. Why do that? Well, on the climb, you know, so my 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 first thing was to get out of poverty, get out of society's dustbin heap, and then again, in in order to get into television, that was pretty audacious because, first of all, I left school at sixteen without any qualifications. I could hardly read and write because I I was as thick as they come. I joined the army. I didn't last long in the army because in those days, if you were a black guy with attitude, you know, one or two things was going to happen. You were either going to um, get molded and you do as you're told, or you were going to get your head kicked in and you get kicked out of the army. So I got kicked out of the army. And, and the only thing that I got to my name is a dishonorable discharge. And then that, I think about 16, if you were a failure then, the only thing that was then open to you was catering, believe it or not. So catering was a professional and they thought, well, this guy is as thick as they come. Stick him in the kitchen, at least he could wash up dishes. And, uh, you know, now catering is a pretty glamorous profession. Um, back in my day, it, it, it wasn't. It was that's, that's where all the stupid people went to. But luckily, I enjoyed working in various restaurants and hotels. Nowhere glamorous, just basically flipping burgers. But again, I've always had the courage to be audacious because I can remember that there used to be a fantastic program on the BBC that I used to love. And I remember announcing to my family and friends, you know what, I'm going to get a job in the BBC making um, documentaries, um, social documentaries. And everybody looked at me and said, I'm mad. But again, if you set your mind to something, it's amazing what you could achieve because I did all the classic stuff. I, I mean, I remember getting a couple of the Radio Times I wrote to hundreds and hundreds of producer directors. No one actually ever wrote back to me. I then tried ringing them. Nobody would take my calls. And then at the time, I was living in Birmingham, and they used to have a big studios where they used to make a lot of the programs from. And I went up and I befriended the security guards who used to mend, um, man the gates, letting people in and out of the building. And in those days, there were sort of manual um, barriers that let people in and out. And um, they had their lovely warm huts that they didn't want to get out of. So I said to them, look, I'll open the gates for you for nothing. And they said, well, fine. You know, so I did that for months, opening the gates, letting people in and out of the building. From there, I met the cleaners who were going in to clean the offices. So I said, can I come and clean the offices with you? So they said, yes. And I did that for nothing. And then I met this guy called Jock Gallagher. And I, you know, I told him I want to get into television. He took me up to his office. He spoke to me for about an hour. 
And he says, look, you know, you're not the sort of person that we employ in television because A, you don't have the education. B, you got a bit of an attitude problem. But he said, look, this is something he said. He said he thought he might live to regret it, but he was going to take a punt. He said, I'll give you a job as a runner for three months and to see what happens. And that man giving me that break then started up a long career in television. So one of the things I hate in life is human resources because human resources filter out people like me. You know, they want to find someone that slots in. And to find someone that has the courage to give a guy from the gutter a break is, you know, something I absolutely uh, uh, appreciated. My story is, is that is one of persistence, audacity, belief that you could be anything if you're prepared to do what it takes to do it. That was Wilfred Emmanuel Jones from The Black Farmer. For more interviews, news and analysis, go to standard.co.uk forward slash business or pick up the Evening Standard newspaper. How to be a CEO is back on Monday. Start your week with us.